For this video, we're going to talk about molding of chocolate. There's three basic types of molds. There's pops, which have a pop stick in them, called suckers in some parts of the country. There's flats, which are just a two-dimensional chocolate. And then there's uh, 3Ds. Now, because it's Easter time when I'm filming this video, which is our strongest molding time of the year, we're going to be doing it with Easter molds. Now, when I was a kid, I used to lay in bed at night and think about how do they get the air in the middle of a bunny when there's chocolate all around them? How do they do that? I was kind of a weird kid. But this video is dedicated to all you folks that might lay awake at night wondering, how do they get the air inside the chocolate bunny? Okay, the first thing we're going to talk about are flats. Now, this is a flat. If I show you the back side of it, it's smooth chocolate, so it's two-dimensional. That's made in a mold like this. I like to prove things. So that comes out of this mold, and it's two-dimensional. Three-dimensional, on the other hand, might still fit in that mold, but you can see the impression goes all the way around. Now this is the one that we're going to talk about in particular, that we're going to put air in the middle of the bunny. Not on this particular mold, but three-dimensional bunnies come in all different shapes and sizes. We carry about, oh, I think it's ten different kinds. And they range in size from this little guy with a flop ear, who we call Bon Bon, to this medium guy that we call Stevie because he looks a little bit like one of my uh, idols, Stevie Wonder. All the way up to this big, giant bunny. And if you ever wondered, why do they put air inside of a bunny anyway? Another question that you might lay awake at night thinking. They put it in because if this bunny were solid, number one, the only way to eat him would be to hammer him. And there's something very violent about hammering any kind of a bunny, especially a chocolate bunny. So that would be number one reason. Number two reason was he's, he'd weigh about 15 pounds if he were solid chocolate. And at $20 a pound, that's going to put him at a pretty high rate of price. So by putting air in, it lightens it, it makes it easier to eat, and he's still attractive and three-dimensional. So let's go out to the molding machine now and make some chocolate bunnies. Okay, we're going to start with the funnel. Now, we've talked about the funnel before, so watch some of the other videos. But I'm going to lift my stick up, and I'm going to fill my mold right to the top. And this is that little bonbon, the floppier bunny that I showed you a couple of seconds ago and I fill them all. Now after they completely fill, we're going to take the product and we're going to tap it out. What this tapping is doing is raising up any air bubbles that might be in it. And We're going to zoom in real tight now on the top and you're going to see the air bubble. I know it's probably losing focus, but see the air bubble at the top? And as I shake it, the air bubbles break. And that leaves the surface of the mold once he's all done intact and looking really, really nice. And we go right along like that with all the molds that we're making. And in this case, I'm making three molds. I'll tap each one of them until I see the surface being pretty smooth and air pocket free. And at this point, these are going to be a solid chocolate little bunny. And again, the last air bubble comes up and they're all set. Now I'm going to bring these over and put them in front of the fan and let them set. Now I'm going to fill the next size up, which is a medium, the medium Stevie as we call him here. He's going to get filled with chocolate. And this is the first semi-solid mold that I'm going to make for the demonstration. I'll fill them right to the top, again using my funnel. And now he's totally full. We're going to take them out, we're going to tap them on our hot surface, and again, we're displacing the air bubbles, little pockets of air that have gotten caught at the surface of the mold, just to make them come out nice and smooth. And if you look at that, hopefully, there are no air bubbles, and he's ready to go in front of the fan and cool down a little bit. Okay, and now he's been in front of the fan for about five minutes. We're going to bring them back here, allow the chocolate to set just a little bit, especially at the surface. And what I'm going to do is dump the chocolate back in to our bowl. And 
until it stops pretty much flowing. Now, if you look up inside, you can see the chocolate has clung to the side of the mold, holding the impression, and now he's open on the bottom. Now I'm going to let him set up the rest of the way about 30 minutes at the fan, and then we'll bring him back for the final phase. And now we're going to make the biggest mold that we make. This would be 15 pounds solid. Let's start right here at the enrober. This is going to take, each scoop is about a half a pound of chocolate. So, in order to save time, we're going to stop videoing until I get near the top. And now we're back. As I get near the top, a lot of chocolate in this. Now what you're, gonna, you're witnessing here is me filling it the first time. This is actually going to be filled three times before we're done with it. And now we have to tap it, just like we did all the others. I'm going to bring it over to the marble and tap it. All filled, we're all tapped, and now the first dump back. All of my chocolate's going to get poured back in, just like it did with the smaller one, leaving a thin surface on the mold surface that we want to harden completely. So at this point, you can see he's pretty hollow inside. This is a pretty thin coating of chocolate at this point. We're gonna let this cool for 30 minutes and then be right back. Looks a little like the inside of a volcano, but in actuality, it's the inside of our giant bunny that we're making. He's filled once, we're gonna fill him for a second time, and we're gonna dump out the chocolate a second time, let it cool for 30 more minutes. Okay, meanwhile, we can fill up the rest of Stevie and finish him. So what I'm going to do is fill him a second time. This chocolate has been setting for about 30 minutes now, and he's all set. So I fill him right to the top. I don't have to worry about air bubbles, the second filling, because we're not on the mold surface. So I'm going to take him, I'm going to dump chocolate back. And again, you've got a hollow bunny now. And the difference between semi-solid and hollow is there's a lot more chocolate on semi-solid opposed to hollow is, would be filled very thin and a lot of the chocolate comes out. We'll talk about that a little bit more. But I've got one of my dipping boards here and I put a puddle of chocolate on it. As you can see, I'm going to take my mold, I'm going to flip them up, set them right on the, bun, on the puddle, and again, 30 minutes, the magic number, we're going to put him in front of our cooling fan. Okay, 30 minutes has gone by and my mold is still sitting here. After it was in the fan, I brought it back here. And now I'm going to pick it up. And you can see that puddle that we put it into lifts up with it. What I'm going to do is very simply break off the puddle, take the clips off of my mold. These molds used to be made out of steel many, many years ago and they're kind of collector's items right now. Now they're made out of food safe plastics. And here you see Mr. Stevie. All done and ready. Now he is three-dimensional and chocolate all the way around. Top, bottom, and this is where I used to lose sleep. But now see the air inside. And that's how you get the air inside of the bunny. Okay, now we're taking our giant mold again and filling it finally for the third and final time. Now every time we fill it, it adds about an eighth to a quarter inch of chocolate around the whole thickness of the mold. We do it three times because we don't want them breaking at all. We want them to be able to transport pretty easily. Now once full, I am going to tip them upside down again and let the chocolate flow right out of them. A little bit of shaking. And once I'm satisfied on the weight, don't try this at home, but once I know and I can feel how much he weighs, it's going to be in the eight pound vicinity. He's all set now. You can see inside. Pretty thick amount of chocolate. Okay, I pre-made a puddle of chocolate that will be our base for the large mold. I'm going to take the mold and very slowly put it right on top, push him down, 
and he is ready to transport to our cooling fan. Okay, 30 minutes have gone by and the mold is complete. What I'm going to do now is simply break off the puddle of chocolate on the bottom all the way around, remove the clips from the mold, and now we take off the mold nice and slowly and I wish I had a marching band. Ta-da! The name of this mold is KT and I think I referred to her as a him earlier in the video but it's really a her and, and she's quite the little bunny. She's dressed up in a suit. She looks a little like a guy. Has a cane and the weight on this runs about seven to eight pounds. I'm not going to break this one open to prove that there's air in it because I put too much work in it as you saw. But we'll show you a photo of the finished product at the end of this video. Thanks for joining us on our journey on how to make a three-dimensional bunny. I hope it answered some questions and I hope you can sleep better at night now. Uh, anytime, 365 days a year, we're here. We make bunnies at Easter, but we also make three-dimensional things all year long, whether it's a birthday gift or just a gift for the neighbor next door. Stop into Fidelis or give us a call because we ship all over the country. Thanks for joining us.